Hello, everyone, and welcome to USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorial number 23. This is super exciting, super high yield. But before I begin, please subscribe to the channel. Please support our mission to spreading free knowledge to everyone across the world so everyone can ace the USMLE. So we're going to start out with a high yield question like we always do. This is a 37-year-old female presenting to the ED with right flank pain radiating to the groin. She has a fever as well as blood in the urine with urine crystals resembling the shape of a coffin lid. Which of the following organisms is responsible for her clinical presentation? Is it Streptococcus, Klebsiella, Mycobacterium, or Nocardia? And I promise we'll come back to this high yield question at the very end of this short tutorial. So let's talk about kidney stones because that's what the clinical vignette was essentially. So very high yield topic on the US Emily. I'm sure everyone will get at least one or two questions on this typically presents with unilateral flank pain that radiates to the groin, especially if there's an obstructed stone. Uh, it can be very painful. That's why we give, you know, Dilaudid and things like that in the ED for this type of pain. Hematuria is very common, typically presents with blood in the urine. Red blood cells will be in the urine. Sometimes you'll have urine crystals, which can be a very important uh, clue to the diagnosis or the type of organism that may be involved if, the, if there's an infection. Now, stones usually form in more concentrated urine. That's why we always, and physicians always tell you to hydrate yourself and to drink water, because that's going to prevent the precipitation of stones, and that's going to help treat stones. Oftentimes, if you have a kidney stone, you're told to drink a lot of water so that that stone will eventually be, you know, released into your urine. So typically form in more concentrated forms of urine. And there's five types of stones that you should be worried about. There's calcium, struvite, uh, uric acid, cysteine and indinavir type of stone. So these are the type of stones that we classically see, uh, you know, in practice. And calcium stones are by far the most common type. Up to 80% of kidney stones are calcium, either uh, calcium oxalate or calcium phosphate. Risk factors for calcium stones are hyperparathyroidism, multiple myeloma, malignancy, like hypercalcemia from malignancy, fat malabsorption that we can sometimes see in things like Crohn's disease, hypocitrate urea, these things uh, can really cause kidney stones. Now, fat malabsorption occurs because fat binds to calcium and that leaves unbound oxalate that eventually gets reabsorbed and then gets excreted into the urine, thus forming kidney stones. Hypocitrate urea is the exact opposite phenomenon. So citrate is protective against stone. So what happens is that citrate binds to calcium, thus preventing calcium stones. So when you have less citrate, you're more predisposed to getting calcium stones. Now on imaging, they're gonna they're gonna be bright or dense. They're gonna be radiopaque on X-ray, NCT. We can identify most of these stones. Uh, the crystal shape is very important, right? Because if it looks like an envelope, that's usually calcium oxalate stones. If it looks like a wedge-shaped prism, that's usually calcium phosphate stones, right? So typically about seventy percent of stones are gonna be calcium oxalate. Ten percent will be calcium phosphate. Uh, again, the most common type. And again, don't forget that association with Crohn's disease and fat malabsorption and an increased incidence of kidney stones, a very high yield USMLE favorite. Struvite stones, which are usually composed of ammonium, magnesium, phosphate. Uh, these form, you know, staghorn calculi, which fill the entire renal pelvis, usually, excuse me, due to chronic infections from things like Klebsiella, Proteus, Pseudomonas, even Staphylococcus, Saprophyticus, right? These are what uh, cause struvite stones. Typically, you're gonna, they're going to be radiopaque on X-ray NCT, will fill the entire renal pelvis, and the shape looks like a coffin lid, uh, which I think is very important, very telling for a clue for struvite stones. Uric acid stones, about 5% of cases, these are seen in you know, hyperuricemic states like gout, increased turnover, cell turnover states like leukemia. This is important because we can see uric acid stones on X-ray, but we can see them on a CT, so that's something that's important to keep in mind. So they typically look rhomboid in terms of their shape and they have acidic pHs. So that's an important point there as well. So again, we don't see them on x-ray, but they are visible on CT. Cysteine stones, uh, this is, you know, not very common, one to 2% of cases, usually an autosomal recessive genetic thing that results in cystinuria it's due to a defective cysteine transporter. Uh, these are gonna be, you know, mildly radiopaque on X-ray and CT. They're hexagonal in shape. And in Dinavir stones, these are very important because we don't see these on imaging. We don't see these on X-ray or CT. 
They're usually related to HIV drugs. Indinavir is an HIV drug. Uh, so look for the history of HIV. So those are the important clues uh, for the USMLE, for the clinical Vanessa you're going to see on the USMLE. I want to briefly talk about the imaging because typically we image stones with ultrasound or CT. Those are the best tests to evaluate for stones. And on ultrasound, we use typically use terms like hypoechoic, which means it's dark, or hyperechoic, which is right on ultrasound. And if you look at this, you know, sort of bat-shaped dark structure, this is the kidney, this bat-shaped dark structure. This is the, you know, renal cortex here. Uh, and we see part of the renal sinus here, but we have this bright circular hyperechoic area with a little bit of shadow. And what we mean by that is there's dark signal just posterior to this, because this is, you know, this is anterior, this is posterior. So this, this is what a stone looks like. It's usually bright, it's hyperechoic, and it has posterior acoustic shadowing or dark, you know, you know, dark beam, sound beam effect here, right? So this is, you know, classic appearance of a stone within the kidney, okay, on ultrasound. On a CT scan, you know, very, these are very obvious, right? They're stones tend to be very bright. So again, this is, this is axial CT. This is a coronal CT, you know, like we're slicing loaves of bread. This is anterior. This is posterior. This is right. This is left side of the body. This here is the liver. This is the gallbladder. This, of course, is a right kidney that's more normal. This is the left kidney that's slightly enlarged. And we have this stone here, this bright circular area, which is a stone, which has resulted in a little bit of dilatation in the collecting system. This is the renal pelvis and the collecting system, part of the ureter. It's a little dilated with some fluid here. And we see the same finding here with a stone along the lower pole of the left kidney. And this area here is a dilated collecting system, this dark area, which is fluid or urine in a dilated collecting system. So that's what it would look like, you know, very obvious on imaging. It's typically round and bright, both on ultrasound and CT. We call it hyperechoic. On ultrasound, we call it hyperdense on CT. Okay, these are, the, these are what, you know, kidney stones typically look like. But remember that uh, uric acid stones are not going to be seen on an X-ray and indinavir stones are not going to be seen on X-ray or CT. Very important finding. So let's come back to the high yield question. It's a 37 year old female presenting to the ED with right flank pain radiating to the groin. She has a fever as well as blood in the urine with urine crystals resembling the shape of a coffin lid. Which of the following organisms are responsible for her clinical presentation? So first of all, she's experiencing a kidney stone. Everyone should remember or pick up that there's flank pain radiating to the groin. That's an example of a kidney stone or nephrolithiasis, right? And I'm telling you, she has a fever, blood in the urine, right? So there may be a sign of infection with fever. And the shape of the stone is that of a coffin. So this is a struvite stone, right? Ammonium, magnesium phosphate, right? So typically these are caused by things like Klebsiella, Proteus, right? Pseudomonas, maybe Staph. So the answer here, of course, is going to be B, right? Klebsiella is, uh, you know, responsible for our struvite stones, right? So that's the answer here. Hope this was helpful. Tune in next week for another high-yield USMLE domination high-yield tutorial. Thank you so much for your attention.